If you have your Bibles this morning, we ask you to turn to Genesis chapter 6. Genesis chapter 6, and we're going to begin reading in the first verse uh, this morning. Uh, as you're turning there, as always, I ask uh, for your prayers in the preaching. Uh, the Bible is very clear through the foolishness of preaching. Uh, that's how the Lord saves people. Uh, Genesis chapter 6 in the very first verse. Genesis 6 in the first verse, the Bible says, And it came to pass, when men began to multiply on the face of the earth, and daughters were born unto them, that the sons of God saw that the daughters of men, that they were fair to look upon, that they were fair, and they took them wives of all they chose. And the Lord said, My spirit shall not always strive with man, for that he is also for that he also is flesh, yet his days shall be a hundred and twenty years. There were giants in the earth in those days, and also after that, when the sons of God came into the came came unto the daughters of men, they bare children to them. The same became mighty men which were of old, men of renown. And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every imagination of his thoughts of his heart was evil continually. And it repented the Lord that he had made man on the earth, and it grieved him at his heart. And the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth, both man and beast, and the creeping thing, and the fowls of the air, <clears throat> for it repenteth me that I have made them. But Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Amen. Dear Lord, we thank you and we praise you for sitting on the throne this morning uh, for uh, doing all things well despite our understanding, Lord, for accomplishing things to your glory uh, that's outside our grasp. We praise you for that. God, we pray that you would take your word and that you'd bless the hearts of the hearers this morning. And we pray these things in the sweet, in the precious name of Jesus. Amen. Now, some very familiar verses of Scripture. Sometimes uh, I don't know that we look on the most important part of it, uh, but we're going to try to do that this morning and look at uh, what led up to the flood, what led up to God's judgment. Uh, things were God's people erred, and then he became wroth with them. And that is something definitely we should keep in our minds today because we can be involved in the very same uh, things. And I believe as nationally and uh, as a global uh, world, we're doing the very same thing. So beginning in the first verse, the Bible says, And it came to pass when men began to multiply on the face of the earth. Now, uh, this is very significant because despite uh, white Americans cutting back on the number of children that they have, by and large, other countries and other races and cultures in the United States, they're having more and more and more children, and the population of the earth right now is larger than it ever has been in recorded history. And uh, the last I read was 7.5 billion people now present on the earth. Men have multiplied in the earth. Men are uh, at a number that's never even been thought possible before. So in that, we live very much in the economy, in the situation in which Noah lived in that day. Uh, unbelievable amount of people. Now, with many, many people comes much, 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 much more sin. Because by and large, mankind is lost. They're on their way to hell, and they do every every evil thing that they could possibly imagine. Once it becomes a thought, they carry through with it. 
That's the way that the, the world exists today. And uh, uh, it's not going to get any better. Uh, there's not going to be any improvement, improvement till Christ comes. Uh, notice in verse 2 that the sons of God saw that the daughters of men, that they were fair, and they took them wives of which all they chose. Now, we find two different distinct groups of people, the sons of God and the daughters of men. Now, uh, I've heard a lot of speculation on that, and it is just speculation, but these two races represent the elect and the non-elect. Some people say that the sons of men were descendants of Cain because the best uh, recorded history, we don't have any, and of course he did meet his uh, faith, but there's no uh, recorded death of Cain. So he had children. The Bible said he took a wife, and uh, they had children, and they filled, they filled the land opposing. And so the people that came from that are now a huge nation just like the sons of Seth. And they're two oxen. And we as the Lord's people, we need to remember there are, we, we exist in the opposite plane than the world does today. We don't think like the world, or at least you shouldn't. We don't think like the world. We don't act like the world. Uh, we're not of the world. But yet still we see our children marrying into that mess. And it's always been that way. We need to educate our children what's an appropriate uh, choice of a spouse Amen. and what is an inappropriate choice Amen. of a spouse. They can't marry the world and expect it to go well. They, and, and, and so we see that even in the earliest history of mankind, that was a challenge to God's people. The sons of God, the men, the people that should have followed uh, biblical standards did not. Now, what motivated them to marry? They were fair to look upon. Mm -hmm. See, uh, mankind and, and gentlemen, us, we are bent to the eye of beautiful women. Now, these sons of men, the ones that came from Cain, they were ugly people. They, they didn't have grotesque features. They were beautiful to look upon, and that's whom they chose. Yeah. And uh, I've used this example very, very uh, many times, but you remember this when I'm gone. Leah was the best wife. Uh, Rachel was, now Rachel, remember he even had to work seven additional years just to get her. The Bible says Leah was wide-eyed, which I'm assuming she wasn't the most attractive girl in the family, and but she was still the best choice. And we find that when we go to making any kind of decision in the flesh, that the Lord will never ever bless that, and nor did he hear. Verse 3, And the Lord said, My spirit shall not always strive with man, you ever felt the strive of the Almighty? Now, uh, despite, and, and listen, I love the doctors of election and predestination, but on the same very token, let me remind you this. He, there is a strife in man when the Lord is beginning that awareness of sin, and he's, been, and he's beginning to make the awareness of Christ as your Redeemer as your sacrifice, there's a strive there. And so apparently these men were very, very aware that they were outside of the will of God and they did it anyway. Yeah. They did it anyway. You know what? That's the very nature of man. We can be aware of the sin and we're still going to go with the sin because it's appealing to the flesh. And that's exactly what these men did. The response of God, I'm not always going to convict them of it. For he is, for that he also is flesh, yet his days shall be a hundred and twenty years. Now, 
Again, the result of sin is always death. The result of sin is always death, and he limited mankind here. He said these are the number of days that he gets, and that was a long time. I mean, that to me, I've never met anybody. The oldest person I ever met was 110, and he said that limitation is because of our thoughts, our bend, the, the direction which we naturally go in. That's why you get old and die. That, that is the judgment. And, and, and so even in the days uh, prior to the flood, this was mankind's, uh, that's who they were. That, that was who they, they uh, appealed to be. Verse 4, there were giants in the earth in those days. And also after that, the sons of God came in to the daughters of men and bare them children uh, and bare children to them. And they came, became mighty men, which were of old men of renown. Now, I want you to see that God's attitude of just judgment is revealed in verse 4. And the, it did not change what, the, what mankind was doing. Uh, the fact that there's a hell coming to the lost does not change their nature at all. Uh, you can tell them about it and tell them about it and tell them again, and it's still not going to change their nature because the only thing that changes man's nature is an experience with Christ. And, you know, I, I look at some of the things that's going on today, loosely called church, and, and what I have found, the church has accepted the world. The world has changed the church. The church has not changed the that's world. It. And, and that's where we live today. And these men of old, men of renown, and notice that. If you underline in your Bible, uh, men of renown, they were well known. They were successful. They, they were very popular people. So don't measure spiritual success with worldly means because they were, they were popular and successful even then. And, and this has been some 5,000 years ago. And, and so we see that uh, things haven't changed a great deal. Verse 5, And God saw the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that, there, and that every imagination of his thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. Now, know that, that the band of man is towards sin always. Private thoughts are not very far from action. And, and, he, and I want you to see, even among the wicked, the lost, he knew their thoughts. He knew what was going through their minds. This was his understanding of sin. Verse 6, And it repented the Lord that he had made man on the earth, and it grieved him at his heart. Now, I want you to see that the creature, now they're all going to suffer, they're all going to suffer judgment. Every creature from, from the horse down to the house fly was going to suffer God's judgment. But the thing that repented God was the fact that he had made man. The Bible says that he made man in his own image. Now, I, I personally believe it's not how God looks, but it was a three-part individual on both sides. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost. And man, it's the spirit of man, the flesh of man, and the soul of man. And those, those three types exist in everything, every living being. And so, because animals, best I understand, they do have a spirit, not a soul, not a living soul, and they do have a body, uh, but they receive judgment too. Have you ever thought about how your attitude, the way you present, the way, the things that you say, how they impact other people? If you haven't thought of that, you need to. Because you know what? You bring other people down. 
Yeah, you'll discourage people in what you say and what you do and how you present. And, and that was the day just prior to the flood. And the Lord said, verse 7, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth, both man and beast. The judgment extended to all creation because of man's action and the creeping things and the fowls of the air. And it, for it repenteth me that I made them. But Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Yeah. Now, Noah was not a good man. Don't let any preacher try to convince you that Noah was any different than anyone else. He was consumed in the sin of the land that day, consumed by the sin of the world that day. He was being carried away uh, by, by the flood of sin, just like the rest of them. But thanks be to God, he found grace. You know, the only difference between you and the, the person that is uh, propagating uh, gay marriage is the grace of God. That's the only difference. We get down, you, you know what will we'll stifle your missionary spirit thinking that you're better than the rest of the world. You, you, are, you, you know what will make you have mercy upon them? Say, I could be that if it wasn't for the goodness of God. Yeah. That, that will give you a missionary's heart. That, that will uh, drive you to pity and compassion to people maybe that you don't think deserve it. But listen, dear friend, give them the gospel. Give them what the uh, Lord gave you. And, and so we find in the days prior to the flood uh, that God's judgment extended to everything, but God dealt with Noah and Noah alone. Drop down to verse 13. The Bible says, evidence of a real grace experience. You, you, you want to know if you've been touched by God's grace, you're fixing to see it. You're fixing to understand and know uh, how the redeemed behave and how God approaches the redeemed. Uh, verse 13, and God said unto Noah, now, if you don't get spoken to by the Holy Ghost, by the Holy Spirit, well may it be that you've never tasted grace to start with. That's the problem with Armenian doctrine and saying, uh, repeat this little prayer. It leaves the Holy Ghost completely out of it. Right, yeah. uh, if, the living word, if the Word of God is not the living Word unto you, you may just need something <laughs> More than revival, you may need redemption. Mm -hmm. and, and so we find huh, the first evidence of this grace experiences experience is that God spoke to Noah. And God said unto Noah, the end of all flesh is become before me. Now, there is no accident, uh, there, there, there's, no, there's no words in the Bible that are not meaningful, but I want you to see the first thing that God told Noah is that he made him aware of the condition of men. It wasn't just the fact that the end of the flesh was coming. The fact was, it was the judgment of flesh. You know what, dear friend? Judgment's coming. Judgment will come to everyone under the sound of my voice. At some time, somewhere, judgment is coming. The end of all flesh is before us. The end of all flesh is near even nigh unto the door, <coughs> and it should motivate us to do something. And God said unto Noah, the end of all flesh has come before me, for the earth is filled with violence through them. Now, another measure of the day that we live in is people going into schoolhouses and just opening fire. Mm. Uh, I think the last, was it 37 children died or something like that? You know, uh, I talked to an educator several uh, months ago now, and she was uh, talking about that. And, I try not to get into political discussions with patients, and I said, uh, well, and I explained to her, and of 
course, they have an answer for everything. I said, we kept our shotguns on our rack in the truck when, when we was kids and never dreamed of something. Well, shootings have always occurred. You know what? <laughs> they didn't occur like they do now. That's right. And uh, that's because violence is in this earth at a unprecedented uh, amount in the history of mankind. Yeah. Uh, as mother used to say, they knock you in the head for a dollar. Mm -hmm. Oh, right. Oh, and this is when I was a boy, 30 plus years ago. I may have been 15. There was a, a black gentleman, a little, a little slow, uh, and we uh, we called him Old Blue. Uh, he was called that right, you know, a long time before ever I got to Cutland City. And Old Blue got a disability check for his for how how he was two hundred and sixty seven dollars. Somebody knocked him in the head and threw him into the river for two hundred and sixty seven dollars. That's his little bitty Cumberland City in 1985. The end of all flesh is before us. We need to remember that. We need to be fearful. And we need to be running and telling people, just like they did in the days of Noah, the flood is coming. Judgment is coming. Uh, the coming of the Lord draweth not. We need to be doing that. Uh, and, and, you know, uh, I think we'll get to the key while we don't very, very quickly in this text. Verse 8, we see the grace of God. Verse 17, we see the, uh, uh, excuse me, uh, verse 12 now. And God, uh, get it right in a minute, verse 18, but with thee will I establish my covenant into the ark. And thou and thy sons and thy wife and thy sons wives with thee and every living thing of all flesh two of every sort shall thou bring in the ark to keep them alive with thee and they shall be male and female of the fowls after their kind and of the cattle after their kind of the creeping things of the earth after his kind two of every sort shall come unto thee to keep them alive. Now, I want you to see in all your illustrations, you'll see in your little coloring books and Sunday school lessons, it, see, it shows Noah gathering these, these species to come into the ark. Now, you'll never find that in the Word of God. And you know why? He, God Almighty called them and they came. And they went right into the ark just like they was going on love boat. They were ready to go. They were ready to leave. They didn't put up a resistance. They walked right to their stall, walked in, and they were good to go. That's the work of God. That's how it happens. That's the preservation of life uh, on the planet we live. The miraculous move of God moving things to, to, to be preserved forevermore. Uh, verse 22. Last verse in this uh, chapter. Thus did Noah, according to all that God commanded, so did he. Now, I want you to see in verse 22, the second thing after belief, God gives you a plan, and then believing God's plan, because remember prior to this day, rain had never occurred. If they had ships that were very small, and just for fishing. Now he says, I'm going to send a great flood upon the earth. I'm going to kill the breath of every living thing on the earth. It'll be a rain from up there coming down, and there'll be rain coming up when the fountains, uh, water coming up, the fountains of the deep are going to break up too. And Noah did not even question it. Yeah. He never said, what's rain? He never said, how am I going to get this boat to the water? 
How am I going to make it seaworthy? How? Do you know why? He depended on God. Now, you believe what you want to about the ark? I believe it was a box. Because the Bible says it was an ark. It was not seaworthy. Me and Matthew David have had a little bud of heads on that. He can believe what he wants to. But you know what? I'm going with the Word of God. And if it was an ark, it was a box, just like the Ark of the Covenant. Plus nothing, minus nothing. The Bible says it was pitched within and without. A lot of different things you can think about that. The best I know about pitch would probably be similar to what uh, we call black tar, but there's, that's about our understanding of it. We really don't know. And the, 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 the substance doesn't matter. What matters is the obedience of God. Doing what God... What did He leave us to do? To spread the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Plus nothing, minus nothing. Just share the gospel. And don't worry about if they're elect or not. You beg with them like they're one breath away from hell. Because you know in reality they are. Just one breath away from being in eternity. And so we find that this great plan that God gave Noah, Noah acted upon. Now go to chapter 7. In the very first verse, the Bible says this, And the Lord said unto Noah, you notice the repetition. Do y'all get sick of hearing the same sermon from me? Well, I just try to, I try to do it like God's example. We're fixing to see Noah gets the same sermon, a few more points, and he doesn't grumble about it. And the Lord said unto Noah, Come, back, come thou and all thy house into the ark, for thee, I have, for thee have I seen righteous before me, in this generation or in this time. Of every clean beast thou shalt make to thee, uh, thou shalt take to thee by sevens. Now, I want you to see this revelation add something that wasn't given in the first revelation. The first plan, the first revelation was what? Two by two. Now he says, of the better, of the clean, of the ones that are not vile, bring in seven. See, sometimes we, we miss that second verse because we're not listening. This, the more of the plan was revealed, and you know what? Noah was still being attentive. You ever, you ever think about, wonder about, you've been in search church so long, you kind of arrived at the point that you know pretty much everything. <laughs> and then you realize you don't. <laughs> yeah. And so, because Noah was attentive, and, and Noah was listening, he got a greater picture. He got, a, he got the second chapter of the plan. Of every clean beast thou shalt take to thee by sevens, opposed to twos, and the male and his female, and of the beasts that are not clean by two, male and female. Of the fowls also of the air by sevens, the male and the female, to keep them, to keep seed alive upon the face of the earth. For yet seven days, and I will cause it to rain upon the earth forty days and forty nights, and every living substance that I have made will I destroy from the face of the earth. And Noah did accord, and Noah did according unto all that the Lord commanded him. And Noah was six hundred years old when the flood of the waters came upon the earth. And Noah went in, and his sons, and his wife, and his sons' wives with him into the ark. <coughs> because of the waters of the flood. Obedience to God's plan, listening to what he has to say. Of the clean beast and of the beasts that are not clean, and of the fowls and of every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth, there went in two and two unto Noah. Now, notice, notice what it says. And, the, and two and two, went unto Noah. He went out there searching for a groundhog. The groundhog came to him. 
He, you know, isn't that an amazing thing? And, and how overwhelming that would be? And what joy, you know what? Could you imagine in having the faith to believe uh, if uh, the Lord God said, I'm going to send two of every creature walking by your house just because I want to. That's outside, that kind of faith we don't have today. We just don't. But Noah did. And they came right up the gangplank, went in, found their place, got comfy, because the rain was coming. Our faith is so, so fragile today. How is it that you have no faith? When the Lord Jesus said that to his apostles, it was profound. They, they were tossing on the sea back and forth and, and rowing, rowing, rowing. And another time, the very same thing, they were on the sea. He was in the hinder part of the ship. And... Uh, they said, Master, we're going to perish. His first question, how is it you have no faith? You ever ask yourself that question? That, that is a true question, right? How is it? And there has to be an answer. I'll say, first of all, is life experience. Yeah, you ever thought in the United States how good we had it? It stifled our faith. The next time I go to South America, I bid you come with me. You'll come out with a great appreciation of what we have here. I'll guarantee you won't ever fuss about beans and potatoes again. It stifled our faith. But when you're unsure of where your next meal comes from, your faith will grow. Uh, we need to be put through the flint mill to grow our faith, to So without any understanding whatsoever, God followed, I mean, Noah found, followed God's plan and it happened just like God said it would. Verse 16, and they went in, went in male and female of all flesh as the Lord com God commanded him and the Lord shut the door. And the flood was upon the day, uh, and the flood was 40 days upon the earth, and the waters increased and bare up the ark, and it was lifted up above the earth. And the waters prevailed and were increased greatly upon the earth, and the ark went upon the face of the waters. They're sailing now. They're, they're up above. Uh, they're, they're, everything is being fulfilled as God predicted to be. Now, is there easiness within the ark? Is there fear within the ark? Is there trust within the ark? You know, what occurred during this time on the inside we have almost no account whatsoever. Uh, Until God intervenes again, and I don't even know if God told him to do this, he sent out, he sent out a bird, and it didn't bring back a thing. And then he sent out a dove, and it came back with an olive branch. <laughs> you ever thought about the joy in the olive branch? That's, that's a type under the new Jewish nation. He brought back the new branch. You know, when you're just about to quit and you're about to throw up your hands, isn't it a wonderful thing when, when the Lord God brings you something brand new? Bring it on the branch. That's exactly what he did uh, for Noah. He, he brought him something new. He reassured him that things were going to be fine. Verse... Uh, 18, and the waters prevailed and were increased greatly upon the earth, and the ark went upon the face of the waters, and the waters prevailed exceedingly upon the earth. Again, if you write in your Bible, I want you to write under that word prevailed. 
What does prevailed mean? It's at least a temporary victory, right? Mm -hmm. You know what? We're, we're riding in the ark, whether you want to or not. And right now, the waters are seeing have prevailed against this earth in, 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 in proportions that have never been seen before in the history of the world. What are you going to do? What, what, what is going to be your, your plan for this day? Ride out the flood. You're in the ark. Just, just ride it out. Continue to have faith. Continue to believe. Continue to look for the olive branch because we're in the ark. Now, you may oppose me on this. I don't know. I don't believe the ark is the church. I believe the ark is your faith. Now, if you want to, if you want to go first class, get in the church. But God called Noah. Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. And after that, he went to work. What about you? Don't you think that's the end result of our Armenian doctrine just saying, yeah, I believe that Jesus uh, is the Savior and never do one thing to glorify God or display your faith. I don't have any confidence in it. None whatsoever. Noah built the ark. Noah went to work immediately and got the job done. Drop down. Uh, 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 go with me to Hebrews. Hebrews chapter number 12. Now, remember who this letter is to. Uh, as always, I will say, I believe that uh, Paul was the writer of Hebrews, even though we're not given that information. <laughs> Hebrews chapter 7, excuse me, chapter 11, verse 7. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 7, the Bible says, by faith. Now, I can't. You know, as the old saying goes, you can't hardly split hairs. Faith and grace are Siamese twins. Grace comes by faith you believe. But you, you can't, you, there's almost no desertion to be made. Because faith is immediate. As soon as you're safe, saved, faith will begin. As soon as you've been born again, your life to Christ will begin. And we find the same is true here, that the story of Noah is just a movement of faith. It's what saved people do. Follow Christ. It's the result of redemption. It's, it's the result of being uh, born again. By faith, Noah. Noah had faith. An essential, uh, essential fruit of uh, a fruit of the Spirit. By faith, Noah, being warned of God. This morning, I'm warning you, judgment is coming. I'm warning you. I'm giving you, I'm giving you the best thing that I could possibly do. Jesus is returning. Judgment is coming. Are you ready? Have you been born again? Are you near unto the cross? Judgment is coming. That's all I can tell you. That, that's all I know to say. And... <laughs> And we find that was uh, what Noah received from God. By faith, Noah, being warned of God of things not seen as yet. Now, I think that's the, the, the pendulum that faith swings on. You know what? I've never seen anybody rise up to glory physically. But I believe fully that it's going to happen. I've never seen a grave burst open. But I believe it's going to happen. Faith moves me in that direction. I've never heard it's enough come up here. But I'm listening. I, I'm attentive. And you know why? Because I'm moved by faith. I keep pleading the gospel because I know there are lost people still out there. So I'm going to continue by faith. You say, well, Brother Larry, the last elect may be saved. Well, they may well be, 
But you don't know that, and That's I don't right. know that either. That's right. So by faith, I will continue. He gave, a, he gave us a commission to the church. And by faith, I will continue to do that till I'm called home or he calls us all home by faith. By faith, Noah, being warned of God of things not as yet seen, never heard rain, never saw rain, moved with fear. Now, you, you, you follow fear throughout the scriptures. And they're always a result of faith. You know why I'm fearful of the coming of the Lord? It's by faith. Because I believe every word that he said. Now, uh, uh, I believe that we'll long be gone. But the Bible says in the last days that men would cry for rocks to fall on them. Yeah. You know what? I believe that that will happen. The Bible says that the final day, he will rain fire out of heaven. Y'all ever seen it rain fire? I haven't. It was before I was born, I guess, but uh, <laughs> Mr. J.P. Quinn got struck by lightning down here at home when, uh, like I said, I guess it's before I was born, hit him and his son was standing, J.P., I guess it was Junior, was standing beside him unharmed. And you know what? You know why Mr. Quinn died? Because it was his day. I've never seen anybody struck by lightning, but I know it can happen. Yeah. And I believe surely, even today, if God so wanted it, fire can be starting to fall at any moment. By faith, I've never seen it rain fire, but I believe it can. Mm -hmm. See, we don't have enough faith in God's plan, do we? Mm -hmm. You know why? We'd be moving with fear if we did. Yeah. Like your life depended on it. You know why the ark got done timely? It's because Noah believed his life depended on it. And you know why it did? If he hadn't pitched the last pitch, the ark would sink. He moved with fear. How about you? Do you ever move with fear on behalf of your children and your grandchildren? Move in such a way you're fearful that their their next tomorrow won't come. That's how we ought to be. Uh, faith will drive you in that direction. It, it, it will it, it will give a new zeal to the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ if we move with fear. Ver second part of verse seven: prepared an ark to the saving of his house. <laughs> to what God wanted. And in fact, <laughs> he says, you prepare it uh, for these, these eight people. You want to preach 127 years for eight souls? I will. By faith, I will. Uh, don't keep score. You're, don't ever keep score. That's foolishness. Just preach the gospel. Just, just, just preach the gospel. And when it's all said and done, the Lord has all that under his hand, not yours. And, and so we find that the Bible just said that he did the job he was assigned to do, and he accomplished it. Notice this by the which he condemned the world. Now, who was he talking about? The Lord God? Look in your King James Bible. Is that a capital H or a lowercase h? It's a little h, meaning Noah condemned the world. You know what? One day, uh, far, somewhere, I don't know when it'll be, it may be tomorrow, it may be 100 years from now, that little tiny church, New Testament Baptist church, will condemn the world. All these other falsehoods out here, all these other false people, will stand in amazement that we preach the truth. All those other millions of people in the days of Noah drowned. And he condemned them. You know why? He listened to God. He built an ark. He got on board. He lived and the others died. 
But that, that was the end result. The others drowned. And so we, we find we need to have faith like Noah had. Notice what else. And became the heir of righteousness, which is by faith. What is an heir? An heir is a recipient. Uh, Jarrett's grandfather left him a little money. Jarrett, did you do anything for that money? He was just in the line, <laughs> right? He was in the bloodline. You did nothing for your salvation, but it should motivate you to do something, right? It should move you by faith. Yeah. And if it doesn't, make your call in the election, sure. You, you know, after 28 years of ministry, I've given up begging people to church because faith will drive you there. And if it doesn't, I can't make you come. Right. Faith. Where is yours placed at?